Hey everybody, we're here with the band show talking to my friend, Mark Favreau. Say hi, Mark. Hey, how are you doing? Where are you from? I'm from uh, an island called Martha's Vineyard Whoa. in Massachusetts. An island? Yeah. Wow, so you have to take a boat to get anywhere? I have to take a boat, and last week all of the boats but one were broken. What? Yeah, it was complete mayhem. Do you have any pets, Mark? I do. What kind of pets do you got? I have nine chickens. Whoa! Yeah. Have you named them all? Not really, because I lose track of which one's which. It would be kind of <laughs> insulting to call someone by the wrong name. Uh, well, yeah. I think they appreciate that. They, they, they like me. Yeah. yeah. And are Let's they all the same type of chicken? Uh, no, they're all different. Yeah, they're all, they're all different colors and everything else. They're, they're, they're gorgeous. You know, it's an interesting story. I'm going to turn 50 this year. Whoa. Which is, you know, getting on there. And this is my first book. So I wanted to be an author for a long time, and it took me this long. To make it happen so it just goes to show if you want to do something you know and you're patient and you work hard enough it might happen and now so. now leading up to becoming an author and, and realizing a dream did uh did a lot of the things that you did in your in your past help you when you got to this point definitely i well first of all when i was a kid i was super interested in history and my dad used to take me everywhere that was like a history site. So oh. we used to go to like Lexington and Concord where the battle took place. We went to Williamsburg, Virginia. Oh yeah. Um, where else did we go? The Freedom Trail in Boston. I went to the Gettysburg bat battlefield. So wow. I, for me, um, I was just always fascinated in the past and kind of hearing about those stories is really what made me want to write. And um, did, did you ever have a job in working with history? You know, I actually was going to be a history teacher, and right about the time I was going to take that job, I started working in book publishing. Oh. And so actually my day job, the thing that, that I do every day, is I, I work with authors who are writing history books. And oh. I've, I've done that for 20 years. Wow, so are you like an editor for them? I am an editor at a book publisher in New York City. Wow. Yeah, even though I don't live in New York City. It now, is the wonder of the internet. <laughs> yeah. And working as an editor, <clears throat> did you find that helpful when you decided to become an author? It really was helpful. Number one, I saw that it was possible that people who struggled with the work they were doing could actually finish a book. Um, and I learned a lot about what it takes to write a book. And I actually, what I mostly do is fix other people's writing. Yeah. So after a while, you learn the tricks of the trade. So when it came, came time for me to do it, I knew I could do it. I knew it was possible. Awesome. And yeah. then, so, but you didn't edit this. You had somebody else I edit did not it. edit. And this is not the publishing house I work for. <clears throat> no, I had a, a really wonderful editor uh, named Lisa Yoskowitz. And, and I could not have written the book without my editor. That's how it works. You write, and then your editor looks at what you wrote. And then she or he says, oh, why don't you try this way or that way? And, and I can tell you, as someone who writes, it's so valuable you crave that kind of advice and so it takes you know it, no one works alone doing a book you get a lot of help from editors from your teachers from librarians um, I, I got it I used to write there's a lot in my book that um, I relied on librarians for and I would email them and say I need something like this and they would often just email me right back and say sure I've got this or that and I'll get and I'll send it to you well, yeah, it's pretty that, amazing librarians love searching for knowledge they they do it was really and they're 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 so incredibly helpful that's awesome well yeah. I'm glad you reached out to the library yeah. it's a great resource for everybody and it's free yes awesome well now let's hear a, bit, a little bit about your book okay well my book is basically a history of the Great Depression which happened a long time ago and it was a time that lasted about 10 years when America kind of almost fell apart when millions of people lost their jobs, they lost their homes, um, millions of them lost all their money, and the country fell into a period of really extreme poverty. Wow. There are even these things called Hoovervilles, which were like homeless camps all over the United States. Um, but so it's, it, it tells that story for, for young readers, but it's not just a sad story. It's really about how America bounced back and fought back against the Great Depression and built something new. So it's really for anybody. I think, I think the story is about what it means to fall down and to pick yourself up again. Wow. And when I talk to my own kids about it, that's what I tell them. And I say to them, you know, what would you do if, if, you, if you fell down and got hurt? Would you stay there and mope? Would you try to get up again? Would you ask for help? And what if the person next to you fell down? What would you do then? So this is, this is really the story about what happened to the country 
when that happened in the 1930s. Wow. And, and, and really kind of built the world that we have today. It's told through the eyes of the people who experienced it. So I, you know, I mentioned libraries earlier. I relied a lot on libraries that th had things called oral histories. So oral histories are when you go out and interview someone about their experience and then you keep the tape and then you write it down and, you, and libraries hold whole collections of these. So I went all over the United States and I looked for oral histories about the Great Depression. So in a sense I could hear people talking about their experiences. So I did that and then I also relied on photographs. There's a lot of amazing photographs of people who lived through this time and my book has about 150 of them. Oh, cool. So sometimes you'll see a photo in a book that's like just on the side and it just illustrates what the person is saying. My photographs are more, they're, they're in the story themselves. They're meant, they're meant for you to sort of see what it was really like. So I thought those two things would be really helpful for young readers. I mean, there's words in there too. Well, of course. You know, but, and there's a story in there. But, but I, I also tried to write in a way that was just really interesting. And so, so, so it's, it's lots of different people's stories woven together. Is that exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. With, with like the bigger picture history. So you wow. got to get both in one package. Hey, do you mind? Can we see a picture from inside? Yeah, sure. Let me find a good one. Okay. There you go. How's that? Oh, what's going on there? That is an, is an elderly woman. And part of the story of the Great Depression is that you know, all of these people were falling on hard times and had no money. And elderly people who were too old to work at that point, there was nothing to take care of them. And they were actually facing a real serious crisis. So one of the things that America did to, to fight against that was to create something called Social Security, oh. which we all still have today. Social Security is a form of payment you get from the government when you retire so that you don't starve and you keep your home. But it's, it's also one that you pay into. It's like a government savings account. Right, right. So part of the purpose of this book is to teach people about what's known as the safety net. And Social Security is a big part of that so that they, they appreciate what it means today because all these things are still around today. Man, that was a lot of fun. Mark Favreau, thank you so much for coming thank on you. the show. Goodbye. Goodbye.